Okay, so now we're going to work on our vector data. Uh, basically, just these, these two measurements here. We're going to be creating excess phase uh, from these, and we're going to be using it with the magnitude correction in the filter itself. So starting with vector L, M, P, I'm just going to come up to graph here and change this to psychoacoustic. I'll do the same for the other. All right, so I'm using a different smoothing style for this. And, and the reason is uh, because when I come into EQ here, I don't have the enormous dip that I have to deal with here anymore. It doesn't matter because I'm not dealing with the frequency uh, magnitude here at this point. Uh, the vector data is just basically going to take care of our phase. <clears throat> so all we have to do is make sure that this is the same. So we're not using 66 anymore. Maybe we can use 70... Maybe 71. Let's go ahead and check it with the other side. Let's see where 71 gets us. Okay, so that might be a little bit too low. Let's try 72 maybe. So back to the other one. Let's see what 72 does for us. Okay, so this, this is probably going to be okay. It's just a little bit low, but that's fine. So I'll use 72 here. Make sure this is all the same. This is rephase. Uh, these, these settings here should be the same as the other uh, when we were doing the magnitudes. This is going to be full range, all right? So match response to target. Let it do its thing, and then we'll have a result that we can turn into a new measurement. All right, so I can generate measurement from predicted here. Now this is going to go through several iterations, all right? The first uh, result that we have is this. This is for my left side. So let me go ahead and make this a reddish pinkish color. Uh, now I'm gonna do the same thing for my vector R. These should be all set. Say okay. And after a few seconds, we have a result. Okay, so let's go ahead and generate measurement from predicted here. Close this out. Now, these are the two uh, measurements that I'm getting from my vector data. Uh, the only difference between this and the magnitudes is that, in this case, I'm not interested in the frequency domain. What I want to look at is the group delay. But what I want to do is look at them together. All right, so I'm looking at group delay here in, uh, let's see, this is the uh, overlays window. And uh, group delay, deselect everything, essentially. All I need to do is look at these two um, corrected responses that I just created. Okay, so what I'm looking for here is uh, sameness, all right, between the left and the right channel. Like this, for example. This looks really good. This is very close. Here it gets a little farther apart, here it's pretty far apart, and here it's pretty far apart. These don't line up too well. All right, now the, the zone I'm looking at is from 400 and down, okay? I'm not looking at anything above this, it doesn't really make any difference, but from four, 400 or so, maybe 500 or so down, I'm going to try to line these up as much as I possibly can. And the way to do that is with the vector EQs, okay? So let's start with one of these major problems right here. So maybe somewhere in the vicinity of 125. So right about here. Maybe a little bit lower, maybe 122. We'll figure it out. So let's, let's just take 122, all right? So, well, before I do that, I need to figure out what channel I'm doing. So I'm going to try to get this closer to the other one. All right, so if I'm on my left measurement here, that means I have to do a boost. If, I, if I'm on the right measurement, I have to do a cut. So let's just do a cut on the right side, for example, at 122. So I grab my right vector, go back to the EQ, take one of these empty slots down here, 
type in the value of the, the frequency that we looked at before. This is 122. Keep this on 10 and start making the cut. So we'll do minus 3 to start with. Generate a new measurement. Okay, so go back to overlays. And now I can see here that the new measurement is right in the middle. So it's halfway there. I need another three decibels to get it all the way down. Okay, so let's go back in here. We'll delete the new one that I just made. And I'll come back into this filter set. And I'll just nudge this down an additional... Well, let's just go to five. Let's just see what five gets us. Generate a new measurement from predicted. Go back to overlays. Okay, so it's almost there. Almost there. Maybe it needs to be a little bit lower up here so I can raise the frequency a little bit. So we'll, we'll put it up to 125. Let's give that a shot. So I'm taking this out. Go back to vector RMP. Change this to 125, like I said. We'll go down to 6. And maybe we can make this a little bit wider. So we'll go to 8. Generate a new measurement. Go back to overlays. Now let's get rid of the original one we had and look at the corrected one. This is looking really nice, okay? I'm going to leave this just the way it is. <clears throat> now let's work on this. Let's bring the blue one, which is our right one again, down to match this. We'll get it closer to zero. Okay, so here's zero. Let's bring this blue one down. So what frequency do I need? Maybe right about here? 85. Okay, so back here. EQ. 85 this time. We'll bring it down about 3, maybe 2 dBs. Give it a wider influence, and let's see where that gets us. Back to overlays again. Now the new measurement is the yellow one. So it looks like we can go a little bit further and make this a little bit wider. And I'm only saying that because I'm seeing, because of the shape I'm seeing here. This can be a lot wider, so maybe a, a Q value of three or four. Okay, so it needs to come down a little bit more, and it needs to be... I'm just going to go ahead and get rid of all of these right ones. Uh, it needs to be a little wider, and it needs to be a little bit lower. So let's go minus 2.5 and give this a Q value of four. Okay, generate a new measurement so we can see it. Now, it's, it should be the only right one I have. Ah, okay, so this is looking a lot better. So now it's, it's, it's doing all right. It needs to come down a little bit more here and here. So I have the option of making this a little bit narrower and then adding another filter here to bring this down, or I can try to widen it and bring it down a little more. But of course, here, it's going to come down too far. So we just have to play with this. Let me delete this one. Come back in here. Let's go down to minus 3. Make this a little bit wider. So we'll go to 3 here. See what that gets us. Okay, this looks pretty good actually. I'm going to leave this just the way it is. Now we can see down here, let me go ahead and get this back to 20 to 20k. This is okay. This is the very bottom of my speaker response right here, around 40. So I'm not going to worry about this right now. What I want to do is tighten this up a little bit because this is really messy. So vector L. I'm going to bring this down closer to zero. And I'm going to do it right here where this dip on the other side is. Okay, so this is uh, about 190, 193. Let me zoom in here a little bit. 193.9, so that's maybe 194, maybe 193 and a half. So 193 and a half on the left side, so 
So that's this one. So I need a new filter. 193.5. And then I'm going to drop this a solid 6 dBs. Leave this on 10. Generate a new measurement. Now let's see what that gave us. So let me get rid of this original left. So now I'm looking at the new left and the new right together. Uh, this looks better. This looks better. Okay, we've gone a little bit past zero, but the other response is now closer, is now a closer match. So let's go ahead and keep going with this. I'll make it a little bit deeper and a little bit more narrow so that it doesn't affect the sides too much. Back to vector L. Filters. A little bit deeper, so maybe minus eight and a little bit more narrow, so maybe 12. Let's try that. Better, better, okay. This is the new one, the green one. And if I start getting confused, I'll just go through and delete my old measurements like this. So I'm just looking at one left and one right. Okay. This is looking nice until we get to here. Okay, so this is the next region we need to work on. I've still got some filter banks left, so I'm going to go ahead and try to fix this. <clears throat> Let me take, what's the blue one? The blue one is vector R. Okay, so let's take the right side down a little bit. I'm, I'm, I'm leaning towards making cuts rather than boosts. Uh, you know, considering the zero is right here, you know what, actually, it might be better to raise the other side. So my left one, let's see, where are we going to do this? I'm trying to find a point that's between here and here, because this is where they're closest together. So whatever is right in between that, so maybe right about here, maybe 259. Okay, so on the left, we're going to boost 259 by a couple of decibels. So my left, we're going to boost... 259 by a couple of decibels. Maybe make this 8 since it looks like it needs to be a little bit wider. And let's see what we have now. Let me delete the original left. So this is the new left and the new right. Overlays, yes. All right, so they're closer. Closer. Now, what about this mess? This is going to take more filter banks than I have available. So I'm only going to go up as far as I can. Uh, maybe this, this here could probably be brought a little bit closer together. If I have two more filter banks, I can work on that. It's actually better to work down here. As you start getting up toward 400, it, it doesn't become so relevant. So let's just maybe focus on this part and this part. So let me bring the right one up towards zero a little bit here. 243. Two four, or 343, excuse me. So 343. Whoops. I'm in the wrong measurement here. This one. 343 here. Oh, I've got one left. This is perfect. I'm going to boost that a couple of decibels. Just pick a random Q value that's a little bit wider than 10. Generate. And now let's get rid of the original right. Come in here and take a look at them. All right, that's better. And here, let's see. My left one is now this one here. So the left one could be boosted a little bit at uh, 377 with a really narrow bandwidth. So 377. Let's say really narrow is like maybe 15. And I'll give this a three decibel boost. All right. Generate. Get rid of the original left. 
and look at the overlays. Okay, so this is actually not too bad. Let me zoom out again. This looks good. All right, this is kind of what you're shooting for. You want this, this sameness between the left and the right group delays. Once you achieve this, okay, here's what I'm going to do. Whoops. If you make a mistake like that, simply go to restore last removed. It'll bring it back because we, we don't want to get rid of this. I was trying to get rid of this one. All right, so come back in here to EQ filters. Let's organize this and then generate that final measurement from predicted there. And we'll do the same thing for the right side. So come into vector R, go to the EQ, organize it, and then generate measurement from predicted one last time. So now what we have are two measurements here that represent our optimized, I'll say, optimized vector responses. Okay, so I can delete, let's just call this optimized. And same here. All right, so we have optimized vector L and optimized vector R and P. So what we're going to do from these two measurements is create our access phase. So go to all SPL tab, uh, measurement actions, and then access phase version. Okay, so make access phase copy. And then we're going to take the right one and we're going to make an excess phase copy of that as well. All right, now, once I have my optimized vector uh, response excess phase measurements, I can go into File, Export Measurement as Text. All right, leave the default settings on these first two and the last one, and then make sure that this one is set to no smoothing here. Say OK change this to excess phase folder that I made. And I'm just going to simply name this EP left because this is the one I have selected over here. It's the left side. So this is EP left. EP stands for excess phase. Do the same thing for this file, export, measurement as text. Uh, custom smoothing should be no smoothing. Everything else is default. Say OK. And now this is EP right. OK, now REW's job is temporarily done. What we need to do is build the filters in rephase. 